Welcome. It's the second Sunday before Advent and the set reading comes from St Matthew chapter 25 beginning at verse 14. This is the passage where Jesus is talking about judgment and is just before the very famous division of sheep and goats. For it is as if a man, says Jesus, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, each according to his ability. And then he went away, and the one who received five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents, but the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. And then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, See, master, you handed over to me five talents, and I have made five more talents. And his master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in many things. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew you were a harsh man reaping where you did not sow, gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, have what's yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, and I gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. And as for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is an extraordinary parable. In some ways it's very encouraging, in other ways it's really quite frightening. But it's all about love and fear. I think I've certainly come to the point of my life when more than ever before I understand what motivated the slave who was afraid to dig a hole and hide that one talent in the hole so that he couldn't be blamed for getting it lost or stolen, just, just washed his hands of the whole thing. Fear is a very powerful uh, experience for all of us. But of course, along with fear goes love, and as we know from St. John, perfect love casts out all fear. The wonderful thing about this parable is the way God himself is willing to take risks with us. He has made us in all kinds of different ways. Some clever, some kinder, some more sensitive, some more gung-ho. We're all very different. And with each of us, he's taken a risk of giving us our free will. He must wish sometimes he'd kept a little bit of power over our wills to, uh, to save us when we, when we exercise them badly. But in dignifying us with, with free will, he has shown his enormous love for us and his trust. And what he wants us to do is to repay love with love and repay trust with trust. The really tragic thing about this parable is the way in which the third slave got his master completely wrong. Quite clearly, his master was not somebody who reaped where he hadn't sown. Uh, his master was someone who was willing to take great risks with his property, to trust people. He was generous. Um, and so the slave made the master in his own image and got it wrong completely. For us, the great danger is that we make God in the image of our fear. 
and then we get trapped too in the in the same circularity we imagine god is going to be unkind or harsh or dangerous to us and so we just keep our heads down and try and avoid these excessive demands he makes on us but he's not that kind of master he's love he's made us to be loved to know love and to respond to love and and like 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 pets like children when when we experience that love well we we glow and we grow there's a wonderful sense in which the kingdom of heaven is an act of cooperation god wants to bring his love to people but he only has us to do it with he came as christ once in time and once in space in a very small space in Palestine in a very small time 2,000 years ago and after that it's all done by delegated love and so he comes to us and says will you join me in this partnership will you pray that my kingdom comes and then says how can I help that how can I join in how can I be part of it how can I add to the love how can I love how can I allow the love that you've poured into me to overflow past me and through me how can I uh, uh, allow the forgiveness that you've given me to pour into me and pass me and through me? And then he shows us and he asks us, of course, to take risks with other people who will reject us. They will be like the bad master. And the antidote simply is to love our enemies, to forgive those who wound us. So the love keeps flowing, the kindness and the forgiveness and the trust go on working indefatigably. Teresa of Avila grasped something of this when she wrote this wonderful poem talking about the way in which God delegates his love to us. Christ has no body on earth but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks. Compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks about to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses the world. Yours are the hands. Yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks, compassion on the world. Christ has no body on earth but yours where does the fear come from that wrecks this project well ultimately and spiritually of course it comes from satan when you find a whispering in your ear that actually you really are no good you can't be trusted with much the enterprise will fail or too much has been asked of you step aside ignore it these come from from the divider, from the deceiver, from the liar. They come from Satan who wants to wreck God's project. But they come too because we are often deceived into unloving ourselves. Jesus says time and time again that God the Father adores us. If a son asked his father for bread, would he give him a stone? Of course he wouldn't, says Jesus. He would give him bread and love and does so trust your father but we don't easily trust God as we have these whisperings in our own ear and our own wounds which we carry around I found the psychologist Eric Fromm very helpful Fromm exercises a very Christian understanding in his psychology he wrote a very powerful book called the art of loving in the 1950s and he talks about the way in which loving is taking responsibility and of course, that's what lay at the heart of the talents. It was taking responsibility for the things that God has given. What can I do with these things? What responsible risks can I take to repay God uh, for his trust in me? And so Fromm talked about learning to love oneself properly by caring about oneself and taking responsibility for oneself, by respecting oneself. Um, in order to truly love another person, we have to love ourselves first, which is 
what the Old Testament means by loving our neighbour as ourself. Of course, the word self is very complicated. It gets caught up. We don't have very good definitions of it. It's too easy to see it as ego. But if you see the self as, as that gift of God in creation, which is yours, which we have to take responsibility for, then one of the things we have to do is to remind ourselves we are loved, we are trusted. God treats us with respect and responsibility. He is not down on us. He, he doesn't disbelieve in us, he believes in us. What is quite incredible is that Jesus, having trusted the good news of the kingdom to 12 close friends, then left, and he left it to them. And they passed it on. And wherever you got the good news about Jesus from, it was passed down in a chain of people who took responsibility for the talents and the trust that God gave them and passed it on to other people. And that's our job too, to somehow let people know that God loves them and he loves them as he loves us in Jesus. Finding ways of talking about it is often very difficult and, and we, have to earn the, we have to earn the respect of people sometimes before we can talk. We have to have been the eyes that showed compassion. We have to have been the hands that blessed. We have to have been the feet that walked to people's help. But then there may come a stage when we've earned the right out of love to tell people where the love comes from. And at that point, we take risks. We take risks with friendships. We take risks with God and the Holy Spirit. But Jesus says, take those risks. I'll look after it. And that's the really amazing thing. We're in a partnership with God. Left to ourselves, of course these things would fail. Of course they would crash and burn. Of course they would collapse. But what we do, we do with the Holy Spirit. What we do, we do because God has made us to do it. He's given us this amazing responsibility of sharing his love, sometimes silently, sometimes for a long time silently, sometimes carefully and clearly in words. That is a wonderful thing. See how much he trusts you. See how much he believes in you. And if you ever forget, then look at Jesus on the cross, for he would have come to die if you had been the only person on earth. He came to find you, to love you, to forgive you, to believe in you, to trust you, to launch you, to allow you to be his hands, his feet, his eyes and his heart. So let us not make God in the image of our fear. Instead, let us be made in his image, which is the image of love and trust and courage. It's true things won't work sometimes, but then ultimately that's God's responsibility. All we need to do is to step up to say our prayers and say, Lord, I'm willing. I love Peter. I love St. Peter because Peter failed so often he fell fat on his face so often when he jumped out of the boat in the storm to go towards jesus he suddenly panicked and fell and jesus lifted him up after all his boastings that he would never leave jesus he panicked and fell and before the cock crowed he denied him three times when jesus asked about some secrets of the kingdom peter got it completely wrong and said lord don't go to jerusalem and yet this was the man that jesus chose to trust as the leader of the disciples the rock the petros upon which the whole church was built and look into the old testament how god always chooses the people who at first sight have least to offer he chose david who was the the, the, the smallest of the brothers he chose israel that was the smallest of the tribes he chose the prophets, most of whom were very keen not to be chosen at all. He's chosen you and I. He's chosen us not because we are particularly talented, because the danger of being particularly talented is we think we can do it by ourselves. But if you're not, if you know yourself not to be very talented, if you know yourself to have limitations, if you know your fears, then you can see that God trusted you not because he thinks you are a, a super person, but because he knows that you will fall back into his arms and say, Lord, I really can't do this by myself. I need you. And then God says, yes, you do need me. Together, we can do this thing. And that's what the parable of the talents is about. It's an invitation to join with God, to take a risk in love and trust, to let God's love drive out the fear and to let him to use us to build his kingdom. 
so that on the last day when we stand before him and he says well these are the things i made you with how did you put them to use we can say lord i took a few risks for you because i know you love me and i knew you'd forgive me for those times when i made a complete mess of it so thank you for sending jesus to die on the cross to show me and to win that forgiveness for me and now lord here i am and these are the risks i took for you with your love and he will say come into my kingdom my beloved amen your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven god bless you give you courage and joy